Oh, we won. All right, well, that was very good. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome to a slightly different gameplay video on this what is an amazing Friday. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well. If you enjoy these gameplay videos, if you're stoked about Jumpstart Historic Horizons, please make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe as well. It really does help our channel. It means a lot to us. So please do take the time to do that if you enjoy the videos, of course. But we are going to jump in. If you don't know what Jumpstart Historic Horizons is, it's going to be Fairly self-evident once we get into it, but basically what this is, uh, if you missed the first jump start, essentially they were themed packs of like 20 cards, uh, basic lands included. The idea being that you pick a pack and then you pick a second pack, you shuffle them together and you create a deck. Uh, now we, I actually don't know much about the historic horizons. I don't know where the like, I'll say chase cards for better or, or for lack of uh, a better terminology there. So I don't actually know what the best ones are gonna be. So it's gonna be a bit of a first look for us. I do know some of the cards, but I don't really know a lot. So uh, we're gonna do the best we can. Obviously two wins is the goal. We're gonna go ahead and pay and we get to choose which ones we would like. Uh, very interesting. Okay. Uh, I kind of want to try Davriel, actually. Uh, I've I've actually heard a lot of interesting things about Davriel, so I think that's worth it to try. Uh, and then we have Madness, Mini Face. What is... Uh, Freyalise actually sounds kind of cool, too. Um, hmm. I mean, I think Madness is the way to go, if I had to guess. I really want to try Freilis, but I think we'll uh, we'll shoot for Madness and we'll we'll take a peek at our deck here. This is going to be fun. Uh, I really, really like, uh, I liked the original Jumpstart quite a lot. I thought it was really fun. Uh, and so I'm really stoked to, to see how this one goes. When it enters the battlefield, return target answer, sorcery card. Okay. Uh, discard two cards. I always like to take a peek at our list before we jump in. I feel like that's worth doing. Uh, discards a card, discard a card. Ooh, that's such a good madness enabler. That's really solid. Uh, they discard a card if they can't sacrifice them. That's very good. Uh, then one of Davriel's conditions. The so the the trick with Davriel is that minus two. I have no idea. We'll probably activate it just to see because uh, I really don't know what the the play is there. Wow, we got Chainer Nightmare Adept. Wow, uh, a commander card if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I just like looking through guys. So pardon me while we just take a quick peek. Ooh, Davriel there is is very solid too. Uh, does this? Okay, so we can we can use Davriel's ability to make ourselves discard the card. That's actually really sick. Uh, I like that a lot. Uh, I feel like we chose two things that work fairly well together. At least I would hope. Uh, it's also mana efficient in terms of like uh, both of them were obviously built in black with a little bit of red. But let's go ahead, guys. Let's jump into game one. Let's see how we do. And here we are, guys, for game number one. Now, this actually looks like a really good starting hand. We've got a nice one. We've got static discharge, which uh, is actually, oh, interesting. We'll read through that a little bit, but we've also got Black Cat, Davriel. I think this is definitely a keep. So let's go for it. Let's do uh, the best we can with this little combo here. I really like Jumpstart. The, if, the, uh, the, the fun thing about it is it's a bit more of that draft experience without the full like time consuming draft experience that I think uh, a lot of people don't necessarily love. Uh, and so I actually do really like it a, a lot. Um, I think it's great. So let's see what we can do. Any target where X is three plus the number of counters on static just charge. Oh, that's very clever. Oh, I like that quite a bit. Um, okay. Uh, we're gonna throw, I think just Black Cat out there. Um, now do we want to attack? Uh, I'm gonna say yeah. The the Blazing Root Wallet is quite good, don't get me wrong. Uh, and they're definitely trading up, but we do wanna get the counter off the field here. So let's go ahead and go for it. All right. 
Obviously they do have a little 1-1 flyer, but now we can static discharge that and it's just gone. They don't have any, any follow-ups. So that seems pretty worth it. Or, uh, ooh, that's a good card. Okay, uh, let's throw this out. This can obviously gain us a life, which isn't amazing, but every little bit counts. Let's go ahead and do this. Get that off the field, and then we are going to go ahead and attack. I'm being a little aggressive uh, as we are learning the format. I do feel like tappers like this are probably quite good, so I feel like it's probably worth it to go ahead and kill that, but uh, I am kind of being more aggressive than maybe I normally would, uh, just to kind of see how things go here. From the graveyard to the battlefield. Very good. Oh, I love that. Doom Traveler combo. What a great little... Wow, that's so solid. Okay, I love that. That's great. Uh, all right, let's do this. Uh, first things first, I am going to attack in here. If they want to block, they can, but they're going to have to discard a card to do it. It's perfectly fine. Uh, resolve. And they discarded... Wow, what a card to discard. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to throw this out. Uh, understanding that this is just going to die, most likely they could just double attack it and that's fine, but we are getting their resources quite, quite low here, which is kind of the goal. Um, so that's perfectly fine. They are going to get Doom Traveler back with this, uh, Abiding Grace. That's very good. That is extraordinarily good. Um, oh, that's so good. Oh my gosh. Faceless Agent is another one of those cards that's a little odd. Um, don't really know how I feel about it, but that's okay. Um, let's do this. We're going to discard this uh, Pilaka, whatever. Um, we'll play the land. And we will static discharge the Faceless Agent, I suppose. Honestly, I don't know. These uh, these spirit tokens might actually be the target for this, but we're learning. We're here just to have a fun time, so no stress. If we lose these, I just want you guys to know this is not like the normal gameplay where we're like heavily trying to, to win the game. Obviously, we want to, but I really just want to take a peek at this Historic Horizons. I think it's really fun um, to, to try these jumpstart formats because I really like them. I think they're really good for Arena. You just get to shuffle stuff up and try it. Uh, and I think that that's very, very worth it. That's very good. Maybe we should have saved the uh, Static Discharge. Wow, what a card. They have Ranger Captain of Eos. What a great card. This seriously is just a fantastic uh, creature. All right, so obviously we have nothing to discard, uh, so I'll decline. <laughs> what do we got? Target creature perpetually gets that. That's very cool. So this actually gets rid of the Doom Traveler. Well, kind of. I guess they get to play it and then they just immediately get a 1-1. So maybe not, but... Wow, what a what a fascinating little list. So they did get mono white. I mean, they definitely got uh, like stacked up on the mono white stuff, which is very smart. One thing I would recommend if you are just playing Jumpstart for the first time, uh, a, a great little uh tactic if you've never played before is very much just to uh, uh no it's not worth it uh we could perpetually give this minus one minus two but they can well i guess they can't can they yeah we should have done it but that's okay we're gonna cycle sure kind of wanted to see what they would get anyway so i'm okay with taking an extra one just to see uh so that's fine wow all right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill this. Uh, the great thing about this is if they do bring it back with the uh, the Abiding Grace, it still dies. It's perpetual, so no matter which zone it goes into, it's getting minus one, minus two, uh, which is just solid. Uh, well done by the opponent, by the way. Playing the uh, Lumbering Light Shield first does make it a little tricky. I mean, we could have played around it, obviously, but uh, that was a very solid play. Oh, no. Uh... Did they play it? Is that what happened? <laughs> Unfortunately, we only drew a land here, which does mean I believe that we're going to lose one, two, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very close to losing. Uh, yeah, I think we're we're probably dead here. But you know what? It's all good. We're just having a great time. I Like I said, this jumpstart stuff is very, very fun. I do highly encourage anybody to just try it out. 
um, because it is such a such an interesting way to play the game. Oh, nice. Well done, opponent. And that's a game loss for us. Now, I actually don't know if this is traditional or if this is single games. Uh, so we'll we'll see. All right, it is single game, so we are on to game number two. This is our last game, so we're gonna do the best we can. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Do we want to keep this? It feels a bit slow, but we do have some removal, of course, and then the uh, Guardian is actually gonna help bring a card from our deck into our hand, so I do actually like this. We're gonna give it a shot. We also have untapped mana for up to three, which is very, very solid, so I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, what I'm learning is maybe we shouldn't be quite so aggressive with our <clears throat> our removal spells here. Uh, it might be worth it just to hold off. Mm. Excuse me, guys. Still early, drinking my coffee. I'm loving it. Uh, Fell Spectre is a very good card, by the way, if you don't know. Uh, let me know also what you guys think about this new this new format. I think, uh, again, I, I did play a good bit of the initial jump start, the, the first round. And I really loved it. Uh, while it was very, it was very fun, easy, kind of relaxing in comparison because a lot of the decision making was kind of there for you, uh, and it was all about just picking your favorite stuff and seeing how it went. Uh, and I really liked that. Um, and so I'm actually very happy to see it back. Now, obviously, some things to note about this version of Jumpstart. The previous one was paper and online. Uh, this is solely just online. So this is only on Arena. Uh, we do not have it uh, in paper like we did previously, which I think is fine, but uh, obviously a little bit different than, uh, than maybe what we're used to. Um, let's go ahead and do this. A 4-3 for three mana that when it dies, it does actually replace itself. Now each player does get to seek here, so that's not necessarily good for us, but uh, it is actually a very powerful card. Sure. Okay. Uh, this is a sorcery. That's a little bit depressing. Um, let's go ahead and do this. This is going to get a card out of hand for the opponent. Uh, it's also going to provide us with just a blocker here. Now I'm assuming they're going to have some burn. Uh, this is obviously a card draw deck of some kind uh, mixed with... Um, Ooh, very nice. Uh, so I'm going to attack in here for four. Obviously, there's no reason not to get a big hit in uh, and we'll see what the opponent wants to do. We're getting close to the empty one as well, which is quite a good card. Uh, and we still have a good bit of removal in our hand. OK. Uh, now, worth noting, because this exiled it, it did not technically well, I mean, it died, but it, it was exiled. It didn't go to the graveyard, so uh, we did just lose it. We don't get a, uh, a follow-up there. Just comment to show the cards here. Okay. Um, so we can Static Discharge, uh, which isn't terrible. I mean, I, I don't think we need to necessarily. This is an enabler, though, I suppose, so maybe it's worth it. Uh, I actually think first and foremost, though, we can cycle this away, see what we get. A murder. Uh, well, with that in hand, I do think we can probably just go ahead and pull the trigger here. It's going to get this off the field. That's just one way that they can uh, enable the, the uh, what you call it, this one, and probable alliance. Uh, and so if we can get that off the field, it's just one less way that they can make that happen. Uh, interesting. <clears throat> okay. I'm glad we attacked with it. Uh, let's play land and I mean, I think we just go for it. The empty one is very, very solid. Uh, so I do think we just go for it. Nothing else we can do. Uh, now we can murder something if we need to, just to kind of get in for some damage here. I don't know why they wouldn't have activated that first to save on mana, but that's fine. Uh, didn't have to. Interesting. Uh, activate only as a sorcery. Man, that's a actually very backbreaking for them at the moment, I think. Um, all right, so. <clears throat> all right, actually, what we can do, do this, discard the terminal agony to destroy the scion, and then we're still mana efficient wise, kind of doing exactly what we need to do. So madness. It's going to allow us to play it uh, if we would like. Uh, yep, we're going to destroy that. 
And I do think we try and kill this Sarkon here. Um, I think that's probably the right play. Uh, they obviously are probably just going to block here. Um, I don't see why they wouldn't. Because what they can do is essentially minus to this to, to get rid of the empty one here. But uh, we actually should be able to, to kill it next turn. Whenever you cast a creature, uh, you may cast a creature spell from your graveyard this turn. Activate only once each turn. Wow, that's really good. Uh, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if you didn't cast it from your hand, it gains haste. Wow, that's so good. <laughs> uh, we can combine Chainer with Liliana's Steward, actually, to make them discard quite a bit. All of these seem like good options, so we'll we'll do the best we can here. We do also have Murder, of course. Uh, ooh. Very nice. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. And they're not going to... That could very, very easily cost them a good bit. Uh, I'm going to decline. We want both of these cards, I think. Um, wow. I can't believe they did that. Uh, that's fascinating. Okay. Well, with that in mind, we're going to kill that. <laughs> uh, we're going to go to... Oh, we won. All right, well, that was very quick. Uh, let's see what happens. All right, guys, so I actually kind of forgot how this worked, and truth be told, we're actually able to just kind of keep going uh, until we get the number of wins that we want to get. So I think we're going to stick with three games for these and just see how it goes. That's kind of our norm anyway, and that'll put us probably close to like 25, 30 minutes. So that's kind of where we want to be. Uh, the question becomes, do we want to keep this hand? Uh, hmm. It's a very good question because I don't really know. Uh, so does it seem great? Uh, it's a little slow. We do get a free mulligan. I'm going to free mulligan. Uh, all right. Well, this is way worse. Uh, <laughs> we can play a little fun with the, the blazing root walla, though. Uh, hmm. No, I think we need to mulligan. All right. I'm going to keep this. This is definitely worth keeping. Uh, and I guess we get rid of this. I don't want to because it's a it's a very good removal spell, but the free mulligan's actually really nice. Uh, all right, well, here we go, guys. This is game number three. Totally didn't for, didn't remember that we actually get a game number three, so let's see what we can do. Ah, gotta love coffee in the morning. All right, so we're probably going to play... Obviously, the Plague Crafter's familiar this coming turn. That's probably going to give Death Touch to the Fell Spectre unless we draw something else, but... Oh, they actually get to... Reveals a card at random. Okay, Terminal Agony, you got it. Uh, we can't play that card anyway at the moment, so it's actually not a bad thing. Um, so that did give Fell Spectre Death Touch, which is quite nice. Uh, next turn, we obviously just play Davriel and, and start kind of attacking their hand as best we can. Uh, Plague Crafter's Familiar. Having Death Touch is very, very helpful. Uh, so I'm, I mean, not that we necessarily want to trade it off for this, but we can if we need to, um, very curious. Oh, ho, ho, wow. Very good. Excuse me. Very good by the opponent there. That's very solid. Um, I'm still not going to block it. I'm going to take one so we can protect Davriel with it. Uh, I think that's more worth it. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and get a card out of hand for the opponent. Let's see what it is. Might just be a land, but regardless, anything that they they get out of hand is obviously good for us. So <laughs> a wall. OK. Did they pick a wall pack? I have no idea what the packs are, so it could very well be a wall pack. Uh, all right. Play in a land. That's fine. Uh, if they play a card and don't kill Davriel, we might be able to, to get rid of everything in their hand and then we'll be in really good shape. Uh, Animating Fairy, very good card. All right, so I am going to block here. That's going to allow us to activate Davriel one more time just to get rid of the card in hand. Uh, actually, even better. We just get to do this uh, and then leave Davriel where it is. So that's going to get rid of that. That's going to deal to and we just pass uh this does have death touch as well so unless they equip this which they should but even i guess even if they do we should be able to just kill something here 
uh, if they decide to attack in. Now we'll see, obviously. Oh, very nice. Very, very nice by the opponent getting a 5-5 five -five here. Um, that being said, we do have Terminal Agony. Now we don't have a, a good source here yet, uh, so hopefully we can get something. Wow, unfortunately, very unlucky. Uh, <laughs> we need a red source quite badly here. Uh, a red source would open up Terminal Agony, which would deal, of course, with the 5-5, five -five, uh, which would be just great. Um, but, and they're not attacking. Now, why would they not? I guess because it has Death Touch, they don't want to, but, like, they definitely should be. Um, this is a sorcery, so I am, uh, yeah, I am going to just go ahead and do this. Get rid of that 5-5. Five -five. That's, a, that's a big hit, and... I mean, truth be told, we have more inevitability right now than they do, so I'm just going to let Davriel do its thing. They could kill Davriel, like, now, if they wanted. All they got to do is attack with everything. Now, they do trade something off to do that, but, like, it would work. Uh, we do have Reaper of the Night looking to come down very, very soon as well, which is kind of nice. Um, let's see. Oh, I really like that. Um... But I do think, let's do this. We're going to discard the Neonate. Uh, Neonate's a very good card, by the way, in case you don't know. We'll throw this little guy out. And we just pass. Again, we have inevitability. As long as this sticks onto the battlefield, we've got, we've got a little something we can do. Now, they do have the Investigate here, so they can start to kind of draw out of the issue a little bit. But we do have Reaper of the Night, which is going to be able to discard some cards if they happen to do that. And it's a very pricey way to draw a card. I mean, let's be very clear. This is three mana just to investigate, which gets you a clue token, but then two other, two more mana to be able to actually do anything with it. I'm going to decline because we do have such a good card in hand. Um, interesting. Uh, do we want to force the discard? I don't think so, actually. I think we can do it elsewhere. Um... Yeah, let's, uh, or do we want to wait? Are they actually just holding up? Uh, they could very easily be doing that. Let's, uh, let's throw this out. Uh, this doesn't seem amazing, I know, but the idea is that we're building up a blockade here, essentially. Um, and then if they happen to, has one or fewer cards in hand, so this is still going to activate. Oh, I guess maybe not. They can draw a card here, but uh, the trick is if they do try to hold up two cards in their hands to get around Davriel, uh, we just Reaper of the Night uh, and Reaper of Night, excuse me, get rid of both. And then we, because they held on to value in their hand, we actually get more value. So I'm actually OK with this. And we do miss a turn of Davriel damage here, but we've got quite a bit of power on the field as well, especially with the Reaver. Oh, yeah, very nice. Uh, I have no idea what this is. Equal to its toughness, this creature can't attack as though it didn't have defender. So this is a wall. Uh, light shield onto the battlefield. Ooh, very good. Uh, so what they can do is get the lumbering light shield, make this cost even more. Uh, and we're actually short. I mean, we're short one mana right now anyway. Uh, but that would actually be quite good. Oh, very good. Okay, fine. Uh, this doesn't necessarily work out for them though, because we just block with the one, one <laughs> and then they have to discard a card anyway. Um, so yeah, that's kind of fine. Oh, please attack in with more. Yeah, that's great. Uh, now could they have a combat trick? Absolutely. But looks like they don't. Uh, so they're going to discard a card and they lose their flyer. Uh, and wow, a good card. Um, Ooh, we do have some good instants and sorceries in our hands, so that's actually pretty solid. Uh, yeah, I mean, we just do it, right? Um, so they lost their flyer entirely. Uh, do we deal with Teo? Potentially, yes. Um, we're going to play this. What this is going to allow us to do is get this. Um... Now, we can attack here uh, with both of these, which I think we do. I'm going to do it. This this kind of means Davriel is, like, dead. Um, but this long term, I think, is better than Davriel. So I'd rather kind of get this off the field. 
Um, all right, they lose one one little guy, nothing major, but they're going to take two damage here, and that's going to put them in range at the very least of of losing out uh, a little bit. So we do want to take advantage of the Reaver while it has that plus two plus zero as well. So attacking with it when we can, I think is probably worth it. Uh, okay, they got Terminal Agony. Um, it's actually okay because um, we've got six mana. <laughs> like That's not really a problem. Uh, so we can deal with this four four or just a creature they don't attack with. I mean, very crucially, they are in a position where if they attack, they have significantly less blockers we do still have Terminal Agony up, so like that's not good for them. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see, how do we want to do this? Um, so I definitely think we just kill this now. Um, the reason being it's something they can't now block with. Um, if they want to investigate, they can, I don't care. Uh, I think we do play this as a land because that opens up possibilities for us. And now, uh, how do we want to do this? They just investigate. Okay, so they can block here. And then they take four. But then they die. <laughs> um, so they can block here which saves them the maximum amount of damage, but regardless, they die. So they're trying to hold this back, but Davriel kills them on their upkeep. So we just pass, and I think that's game. I think we did it. Yeah, all right. We did it, guys. Three games, we got two wins, that's pretty good. Let's have a quick chat about this, and then we'll, uh, we'll see where we're at. All right, so just to clarify how Jumpstart Historic Horizons works, because I didn't really explain that. I actually didn't really know. Uh, that was a bit of my fault. But uh, the idea is basically you can play until you get two wins or even more, actually. You can keep going. Uh, but I think we're just going to keep it to three. That's our goal. Uh, and I really, really like this format. It's so fun. Uh, if you didn't get to play the first Jumpstart, I highly encourage you to check this out this time. The prizes are also quite good. Uh, we just got a seasoned Pyromancer, which is like a really killer card so i'm very happy to have that um and man what a what a really fun way to play it's very simple it's a little bit of the draft format without the like crazy long uh draft experience uh and so i definitely encourage everybody to check this one out i really loved it i hope you guys did uh thank you guys so much for being a part of this and watching this again please make sure to subscribe if you're not already if you enjoyed this please leave a like as well but thank you guys so much for watching really appreciate it have a great friday we'll see if we get another one of these up today if not hopefully later this weekend but i will see you guys soon for some more gameplay videos.